Okay, so these are the parts that I've made um, that are going to provide the lathe spindle indexer. Um, so we're going to put this together now. So the first thing is this plate, uh, which gets locked down with these two screws. So we're going to do that now. So that's the first thing. Lock these two down. And then the next thing is uh, putting this stepper motor mount on this location here and placing that down. So I'm just going to pause the video and get that done. Okay, so the next part then, um, this part is loosened off for the automatic uh, feed screw and drops down to the bottom. And there is a collar there that I've already taken off. So basically this small, the only thing basically normal operation that needs removing is a little collar there and these two parts here. So let's put them to one side. Okay, so the next part then is this unit, which is actually two pieces. So <clears throat> this is the board out um, runner for the pulley. And that slides on here. So let me turn it around. And the idea is that that slides over here. Oops, sorry. That slides on there and then fastens down onto that grub screw there. So the next part is the belt tensioner and I'm going to mount the belt tensioner on there with its screw and tighten that up and that gets levered down to provide tension obviously onto the belt. There's just a little bearing there that's rolling and allows it to move the belt to slide under it. Okay so I'll tighten that up next. Okay so that's the setup so far. Got the pulley mounted, got the uh, motor mount mounted and the belt tensioner mounted. So the next thing, and I'm not going to be able to do this one-handed, so again I'm going to have to cut the uh, camera off. So we're going to mount the motor on there. We're going to put the belt in roughly the right position and tighten up the motor mount. And then we can nip this up to provide tension to the belt. So that's the final thing. So that's the overall setup. You can see there that the belt's nice and tight. And the next thing is to move over to the controller I've made. So this is all based on Steve Ward's World of Ward controller. Um, I've made a totally separate video of putting this together. Um, and I've also added a uh, XLR 4-pin connector and power supply connector. So it all just plugs in. So the stepper motor plugs in and then the power supply. So we'll put the power supply on now and we'll hopefully see it running. Okay, so that's the overall setup. Let's boot it up now and see if it runs. So power up the unit. Um, the setup that I've got is a 60 tooth uh, wheel and a 15 tooth uh, gear as well, sorry. So this is running at a 1 to 4 ratio. I've got this set to micro stepping. Uh, the resolution is nowhere near as good as it would be with a um, with a stepper, sorry, with a dedicated divider, but hopefully this should be uh, good enough for uh, for clock wheel cutting. So, 15, just as a random example. So we're going to pretend that we've got a uh, clock wheel blank in there. So there's our example of a wheel blank in there. I've got my pinion and I have my pinion and wheel cutter mounted on the cross slide, and let's see if this one. So here we go. There you go. And there you go, which looks pretty good to me. Uh, I've done a few tests on accuracy and I've done 200 um, divisions and I tried to uh, align it all up best I could with a height gauge uh, and a marker and the wheel returned perfectly back to the zero point after 200 divisions. So. I think this is definitely going to be good enough. So I suppose the next step really is actually seeing it in full action. The concept definitely works. Now I can uh, divide the, the lathe head. I suppose the next question now is can I actually um, cut, will it, will it work in production with uh, the pinion and wheel cutter? I can't see why not, but that'll be the next step. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers now. Bye bye.